I've gotten a lot of questions about how to make your own network cables to save money. Whether you're trying to install network cables in your home, uh, wiring your different rooms to a central location, or if you're trying to put together network cables uh, to connect your different components to the network itself that's already in your home, um, you can make your own cable. So uh, today what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover how to make CAT5E or CAT6 cables, which are a pretty standard cable. Um, if you take a look here, we've got these cables uh, looks like this. These are called an RJ45 uh, end uh, on each end of these uh, cables here that plugs into the device into the wall. And there's actually a couple different wiring standards that you can follow in order to um, wire these, these connectors. And uh, I'll cover that in detail. I'll include a, a link to a cheat sheet that kind of shows you what the color combination order is so you're wiring them appropriately. But so what we're going to do is we're going to go over how you turn a cable that's like this into a cable that's like this. And we're going to do that by using a couple different things. One, we're going to use these easy connectors that are available. Um, these make wiring the uh, connectors on the ends of the cables a fairly easy process. And we'll also go over the other tools that you'll need to um, use in order to wire the cables correctly. So. Um, this is an example of what this connection is going to look like um, when the connector is already on the cable. Like these wires are poking through here. That's a product of these easy connection uh, connectors. And then also this is what the wires look like stripped down. So you've got, once you strip the insulation back, you've got this plastic core that's in the center. And then you've also got these four twisted pairs of wires. So um, let's go and take a look at how you wire these. There's an A and a B standard for wiring these connectors, and we're gonna follow the B standard. So that order is white with an orange stripe, orange wire, white wire with a green stripe, a blue wire, a white wire with a blue stripe, a green wire, a white wire with a brown stripe, and then a brown wire. And when you wire these, you wanna make sure that you're looking at the bottom side of the connector, for the standard, if you do it um, the other way, it's not going to be according to spec. And it also, if you wire each, uh, if you put these connectors on each end in an opposite direction, the wires won't communicate correctly. So you want to make sure you're looking at the bottom of the connection and make sure you get these in order. And again, I'll put a link uh, in the video to a sheet that will show you exactly what the color combination should be. So first up, we'll want to strip back this insulation. Um, you can either use that with a utility knife like this, and just cut the insulation back. Just make sure you don't go very deep. Just kind of barely cut through the insulation, cut all the way around it, and then pull this uh, insulation off here. Or you can use one of these tools that actually has a razor blade in it. And all you do here is you just put the wire inside of this connection, you spin it around, and it cuts through that outer layer of insulation, and then you can kind of twist and just pull it right off. And if you use one of those tools, you're not risking um, cutting too deeply and cutting through these wires, which would be bad. Um, next, we need to remove the center plastic core. Uh, again, you can either do that with your uh, standard utility knife, or I've got this special angled cutter that I can use. And basically just get right down in here and nip this as close to the insulation as possible. And what I like to do is I like to go around and cut all four sides and then twist this and remove it. After that, you'll want to unwind all these twisted pair cables uh, until they're separated. And once you get all these wires untwisted, you wanna make sure that they're flattened out as much as possible. So you can just do this a few times. You might wanna take a couple wires at a time if the wire is too stiff. Just kind of squeeze with your fingers, with your thumb and your forefinger, and run over the wires until they're fairly straight. They don't have to be perfect, but they need to be pretty close. And you'll understand why that is here in a minute. So on these easy connectors, basically um, the wires will come all the way through the end of this uh, RJ45 connector. Um, on a normal RJ45 connector, this end is solid, and it's a little bit more difficult to try and get all these ends lined up and fed through properly. So uh, the easy quick connectors actually uh, are uh, make the process a lot simpler, allowing you to just pass the wires straight through. 
So on 24 gauge wire, we wanna leave about, I find it's easiest to leave about three inches, three to four inches worth of uh, extra uh, stranded pair exposed to feed through. If we're feeding through 23 gauge wire, then uh, it's actually easier than I found instead of stri stripping off this much wire to just leave it short. So about an inch and a half worth of wire um, on this uh, 23 gauge is actually, uh, actually works out pretty well. The thinner wire though, the 24 gauge wire, um, I find it's easier to, to leave more exposed. So now we're gonna wire up according to our specification, which is the white and orange and the orange wires first. So we're gonna isolate these and then we're going to make sure the boot is, or the connector is upside down. And we're gonna feed these through, feed these through the first two slots here until they come out of the end. And then next we have the white and green cable as well as the solid blue cable. So we'll feed the white and green cable in next here. And these have channels that allow us to line these up properly. And then the blue cable. Okay, so you can see we've got half of our cables now coming out of the end of this connection. Next up is the white and blue. And you've got the solid green cable. And then you've got the white and brown cable. And finally the brown cable. Okay, so it's always good to, once you run these through, um, to make sure that they're still in order. Cause sometimes when you run, run the boot, or sometimes when you run the connection down, the wires, if they're crossed down below, might actually jump. So you need to make sure that once this is down as far as you want it to go, that um, it remains in the same spot here. If you have the stress relief boot, make sure you put that on the cable before you actually feed the connector on over these wires. Otherwise, you're gonna have to pull this back off, put this, slide this boot on, um, and then uh, refeed your wires back through. What this does is it helps prevent strain on the cable, so that way, as it's being used uh, and flexes, it has it's less likely that your um, wires will pull out of their connection pins. So what we need to do now is we need to cut this wire off. Um, but first, since we've got this boot, what we wanna do is we want to insert this cable as far as we can into this connector. Depending on the width of your wire here and the, the uh, gauge of your wire, you might have to squeeze this down a little bit. So we want this in here. We want the, the actual uh, insulation inside of this connection if at all possible and then we also want to put this connection in as well okay okay so what we'll do now is we'll just take a utility knife and they actually make a special tool that will do this all in one motion um, but if you don't have that tool I'll show you what you need to do with a standard uh, crimp tool and then a utility knife so basically what we'll do is we'll cut as close as possible to this um, connection and cutting through these wires, make sure you have a really sharp utility blade. And you wanna cut through as much of this insulation um, as possible. Sometimes it's easier to kinda of go from side to side, um, cutting through one wire at a time, since you are cutting through copper wire as well. And you can also bend these back and forth to try and break some of that copper off and finish up the insulation. So as you can see, the end here is pretty flush um, with the plastic, but we wanna make sure that none of these wires are actually exposed because if they are exposed and sticking out of the connector, it can cause problems in your network equipment. So what I like to do is just put my hand on the, the boot and just gradually pull down on the wire and push up slightly with my fingers to try and get this wire recessed slightly. So you can see here now this wire is actually recessed inside of the connector, but there's still enough wire exposed to where when we crimp this down, it's going to hit these pins. Um, the, there's still enough wire inside over these pins to where when we crimp it down, it will make the connection. 
So now that we've gotten this all trimmed up and ready to go, we wanna take our crimping tool. This is a really easy process. All we need to do is feed this in the end in the correct connection, and then we crimp it down. Once it's done, you release it, and that's all you need to do. So this connection is made, it's ready to go. What we'll do is we'll come back and we will do the same process on the other end, and then we'll test it. So now to test the cable to make sure it's functioning properly and it's receiving the proper signal, we're gonna use this tester, and basically um, it's connected here in the middle, but this one part is removable. And uh, so all we need to do is we need to plug one end into one end of the cable, and we need to plug the other end in the other end of the cable, turn it on, and if this comes back as flashing green, it says straight through, then it works. So well, let's find out. It works, it's wired properly. So that's all you have to do to make your own patch cables um, or run patch cables in your own home. You can make the connectors, put the connectors on yourself and save some money. So we hope you found this video was helpful. If you like this video, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And be sure to check out our other videos that we have available on tophomeowner.com.